Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the stream. My name is Technomagus, and like everybody else today, this is Sentinels of the Multiverse, Villains of the Multiverse, because a new expansion just dropped uh, today, releasing 10 new villains for the team villain mode. So, for those of you wondering where I've been these past couple weeks, I... Not in a very interesting place, I'm just going to tell you that right now. It's been actually rather boring. I've just been overworking myself and not really been up to streaming. Let's just put it that way. But anyway, that, that, that's not important now. We've got new content for Sentinels of the Multiverse, so let's get right into it. So, Villains of the Multiverse, like I said, adds 10 new villains to the team uh, villain mode. So we've got Ambuscade who uh, is now the Slaughterhouse Leader. Basically think the Sinister Sticks from Spider-Man. He has uh, himself and five nemeses in his deck. And his, uh, and they basically are the... Uh, and they're basically like a, villain, a little mini-villain team of their own. And so he has uh, he has stuff that lets him protect them as well as heal and, and give them extra abilities. And then when he's defeated, he gets them all back out for one last hurrah before they go away. Biomancer, um, who is the nemesis of the Scholar, is a is a flesh or the flesh molder. Basically, he summons uh, simulacrums or flesh ch children who are pale imitations of other heroes. Um, so and they uh, and they riff off the heroes they're imitating. Uh, also, he's a real pain in the neck to deal with because he has damage reduction the first time he takes hit a hit and every turn he heals so don't let that 18 health fool you it's actually a lot more bugbear is the ravenous hunter uh, nemesis of night mist so he is all about damage all he does is damage and he just hunts down the highest health target and like uh the front side of spite Whenever he deals damage, he regains that much health. But as more characters fall, he gets stronger and stronger. So if Bugbear isn't involved in the game, you want to take him down first. Like you, you do not want to let him stay in play for very long, because the longer he's on, in play, the higher his health is going to be, and the harder it's going to be to actually kill, to take him down. Then we have La Capitan. This is a younger version of La Capitan than the solo villain. Basically, when she first started gallivanting around time she still steals cards from everybody um and basically it, it is just a pain in the neck she has effects that allow her to take turns out of order um so she can really screw with the turn order though she she's more of a nuisance than anything as you can tell by the difficulty one it, it's basically a oh hey by the way la capitan's gonna pop in poke you and then pop back out or oh hey la capitan's gonna poke in blow up that potentially annoying card uh, or useful card and then pop back out again she also has the ability to let the environment take the, a turn out of order which is weird and then when she and when she's defeated that is la commodora who will be appearing in the final expansion of oblivion but that that's for another day then we have a team here uh we have citizen hammer and citizen anvil uh from citizens dawn so they've gone on their own solo mission, uh, hunting after the Visionary. So Hammer burns things with fire, Anvil protects him. Uh, they also have a lot of annoying cards that let them shield the other... Uh, uh, they have a lot of uh, effects that let them shield the other villains, and then if, if Hammer is taken down before Anvil, Anvil just reses him. So you have to take down Anvil, uh, if you, otherwise, yeah, Hammer just keeps coming back. Then, oh, come on, next. Next. All right, next, here we go. Now we have Greaser, the Hepcat Bounty Hunter. Um, so Greaser's shtick is, he's a bounty hunter. He picks the highest health target, and then he just zeroes in on that guy. Um, so, and then uh, when that hero is defeated, he just leaves. <laughs> and when he leaves, he gets uh, to help the villain with the lowest uh, remaining health. Now, of course, you can also cause him to leave by just punching him down, but sometimes it's easier just let uh, to just let him take his mark and have him go away. Hi, Lone Wolf. How you doing? 
All right. Next villain, Misinformation, now is a team villain. She's a reality rewriter. So as you might remember, Misinformation, the solo villain, is quite possibly the most annoying villain in the game to fight because you can't even do anything for about the first hour until she finally decides to flip, and then you can, and then you can beat her down uh, with constant uh, retaliatory damage. This time, however, uh, instead of retaliating each turn, she just screws with your setups. Uh, not to mention, she also has the annoying, or she has a lot of things that that blow up your card, or constantly blowing up your cards, uh, and but also bringing stuff back. So she kind of helps as much as she hinders, but more hinder. Then we have the operative, uh, the mystical combatant. So you remember the operative from the chairman? Well, this is a bit of a downgraded version. She's all about damage. She, once again. Um, and she's a lot less violent. Well, actually, no. She, she's more violent than the, the chairman version, but you don't have to worry about swarms of thugs and underbosses to deal with. She mostly just solos everybody. All right. Uh, then we have Plague Rat, um, who also is a kind of a downgraded solo villain, the Chemically Leashed Pursuer. So he has handlers in his deck, that um, keep him from going too crazy because he otherwise just attacks indiscriminately. Um, and, and as you'll see when we actually start the game, the handlers are the Ghostbusters, the classic Ghostbusters. Um, but other than that, he, he's just all about uh, just rampaging as much as possible. And then Sergeant Steel, the filter leader. So he his deal is he has agents that all have a little icon here that look, whoops, did not mean to do that. So they have a little icon that's the filter symbol, and cards in his deck cause that symbol to trigger on certain agents. Um, like he activates the filter ability of the highest uh, villain, or of the highest living agent, uh, and they get extra dam or they get extra effects. Like one some of them deal damage to single targets, some of them deal damage to everybody, some of them let him play extra cards or heal him. It, it depends on the agent. All right, so with that being said, we'll go ahead and do four villains for the first game. So we'll do Ambuscade, we'll do Misinformation, we'll bring along Hammer and Anvil, and Bugbear. And then as for our, the environments, we have three new environments as well. Um, we all know about the Temple of Zhulong from the preview pack, because I've been playing the heck out uh, I always play this environment because it's super hero friendly but we also now have the court of blood a vampire castle uh with unruly mobs and and vampires um it has some interesting things like all the vampires are immune to radiant or will take extra damage from radiant and all deal infernal damage um they also have the ability to heal themselves and there's even a card in there that disables all healing other than for vampires um which can really help against a heavy heal villain like Bugbear. Then we have Madame Mittimer's Fantastical Festival of Conundrums and Curiosities. This is the most complex environment. It's like fighting Wager Master. Every turn, the rules change. Um, you, you're, you don't know what's going to happen until it happens. Uh, it's also one of the most unfriendly environments in, that the heroes can go up against because a lot of the stuff will just screw with the heroes. But some of it will also screw up with the villains, so it can kind of hit or miss. Then we have Magmaria, which is basically the underground lava area. Um, here we have a whole bunch of magma uh, magmen, who, and then there's magma crystals that you can uh, obtain by doing certain actions. And these, <laughs> uh, the magma crystals can be fed to the magmen to get special ability or to get special effects. Like uh, some magmen will deal damage for you if you feed them. Some magmen will protect your team. Um, one of them will, I believe one of them lets you play extra cards. So for our first event, let's go to the Court of Blood. Now, as for our heroes, um, eh, let's just bring some fun. Um, so we're going to need a good DPS, so let's bring along Knife. Uh, and then we'll also bring along... Uh, We'll bring along Scholar because he's good for protection. 
Um, and naturalist, because he has, because he can go pretty much however he wants to. And then finally, eh, let's bring along good old-fashioned grandpa. Why not? All right, let's get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out their card. So Ambuscade, who is uh, Nemesis of the Naturalist, I didn't mention that earlier. So he starts from the game until, or he starts the game with one of his Nemesis, uh, with one of his Nemesis guys. So uh, it's not going to actually, I can't actually click that until he starts the game. All right, so we'll deal with that in a sec. Um, and then, so misinformation. She starts. Uh, she reveals two ongoing cards, and then everything else shoved back into her deck. And then she doesn't actually her card doesn't actually deal damage herself it's just at the end of her turn the top card of each hero deck is moved to the bottom of that deck so she just messes with your setups we have hammer so we get a position card uh and then he's immune to damage by anvil um, and hammer is an anvil is immune to damage by hammer they also start with the hammer and shield um so at the end of hammer and anvil's turn a hammer deals the non-villain with the second highest to fire and all Anvil does is res hammer if he's down. Um, Bugbear starts off with the Blood Scent, and then when he deals damage, he regains that much HP, and at the end of Bugbear's turn, he deals the hero with the highest HP two damage, then if he has Blood Scent in his play area, gives it to the hero with the highest HP. And then back to Ambuscade. Um, end of Ambuscade's turn, he deals each target next to a snare three melee damage. If no one is dealt damage this way, he plays his top card. All right, so for our first nemesis, we have Glamour. The first time a nemesis would be dealt damage by a hero each turn, redirect that damage to the hero with the highest HP. And if Tachyon is active, which he is not, thankfully, heroes can't redirect damage. All right, so now we have Internal Collapse from Misinformation and a World Improved. Oh, that's a bother. Uh, wildfire. All right, we'll, we'll zoom in on each of these when we get a chance. There's Blood Scent. All right, so starting off, Envenomed Bolts. This goes next to the hero with the lowest HP. Whenever that hero plays a card, Ambuscade deals that hero one damage. He's then going to hit Naturalist, because he is next to a snare. All right, so now, Misinformation. Internal Collapse. At the end of Misinformation's turn, each player destroys one of their equipment cards. If nothing is destroyed this way, this card is destroyed. Then each player may move one card from their trash to their hand. So like I said, her cards kind of help and kind of hurt at the same time. Um, then we have a world improved. Villain targets are immune to damage. At the end of a hero's turn, if no cards were played and no powers were used, this card is destroyed. So, kind of annoying, but... Alright, so we're going to go ahead and... Let's go to Crocodile. And then Desperate Prey into Rhino. Play Indomitable Force. Yeah, I'm basically kidding. Wrecked by Ambuscade, but that's okay. Alright, so now we have Memory Loss. Each hero, Misinformation deals each hero two psychic damage. And then each player, each player either discards one card or destroys one of their ongoings. So Naturalist is definitely going to be discarding a card. He's also taking four damage. All right, so I'm going to discard. Um, I don't want to discard any of these cards, actually. That's fine. Uh, we'll discard Natural Forms Power. Knife will discard Incidental Contact. Scholar will discard No One to Turn Loose. And Legacy. Ooh. Well, that's a happy card. We're not discarding that one. We'll discard back this strike. All right, and then everybody flips a card to the bottom of their deck. Get rid of internal collapse because there's nothing in to destroy it with. All right, now um, I don't have any ongoing remov removal at the moment. That's bothersome. Um, so I think. 
Oh, actually, I never checked these guys' cards. So, Wildfire. Um, destroy... So positions destroy each other, uh, or destroy all the other ones. They're kind of like the scions from Progeny, almost. So at the end of Citizen Hammer, uh, Citizens Hammer and Amble's turn, Citizen Hammer deals each non-villain target one fire, and each citi and then they both regain one HP each. Oh, so uh, Naturals is just going to soak all this, so that's good. And then we have Hammer and Shield. Damage dealt to Citizen Anvil is minus one. At the end of the citizen, at the end of the Citizen's turn, Anvil deals the hero with the highest HP two melee damage. Um, actually, is this all villain targets? Yeah, that's all villain targets. All right, and then Blood Scent. At the start of Bugbear's turn, Bugbear deals the target next to this card three melee damage unless someone discards two cards. Then it goes back to Bugbear's side. So if we can destroy Blood Scent, that actually neuters a lot of blood, uh, Bugbear's ferocity. Okay. Um, anyway, I think at the moment, with what I've got, I'm just going to double skip and get rid of a World Improved. So that way we can actually do stuff. All right, so now we've got Scorching Snap. Citizen Hammer deals the hero with the highest HP to fire, and then the next damage dealt by that target is prevented. So Knife's not dealing... Actually, wait a minute. Uh, oh, it's all going to the Naturalist anyway, so that's fine. Um, it doesn't matter. It's all going to the Naturalist. Uh, and then back to Naturalist. Okay. So now, let's see here. We've got seven non-hero targets, so I can just grace under fire. Um, that is a Nemesis, so it only affects Nemesis. Um, I could grace under fire to just hammer Glamour right now, but I think... Now, we need to get rid of Bugbear. Actually, and also, if I Grace Under Fire Glamour, it's just going to go back to uh, the Naturalist, which would be kind of bad. Um, so I could either go after Hammer and Shield, or I could go after Bug... I think going after Bugbear is the correct play. So, seven damage to Bugbear. And heal, even though it doesn't matter. Alright, so now Bugbear gets Predator's Pattern. Reveal cards from the top of the deck until an ongoing is revealed, put it into play, and then all the other cards are discarded. We have Feral Brawn. Damage dealt to him is plus one, damage dealt to him is... Or damage dealt by him is plus one, damage dealt to him is mi uh, minus one. And then highest HP, it... So... Naturalist is going to take two more damage, Bugbear is going to regain that two HP. And then Blood Scent is going to go to... Let's give it to Legacy. Alright, so now we're going to play Takedown. So we're going to say, um, you don't get to do anything this round, guys. Alright, now, unfortunately I don't have any real power. So let's go ahead and give the Naturalist a health. Um, and he will go into full Turducken and play Resilient Hide. So that way he will be able to... So Indomitable Force will take effect first to reduce the damage by one, and then Resilient Hide will prevent it. But more importantly, this will allow him to regain health. Um, so let's see. doesn't matter. He's taking two damage either way, so we'll say Ambuscade so Bugbear doesn't heal. But the more important thing is none of them are playing cards over the next round. Oh, and there's Bathory. So she deals the hero with the highest HP, two melee, and two infernal damage. Um, which would be Legacy, except that it's all prevented by uh, Resilient Hide and Indomitable Force. And Naturalist is getting a little dicey. Alright, so now we will play... Shift back into Rhino. Draw a card... And then Crocodile will chomp. Oh, right. Scorching Snap. He can't deal damage right now. That's fine. But that's good, because that means that that effect is now worn off. And then everybody's just going to flip their top card to the bottom. 
All right, now we get to start doing stuff. Um, I'm doing all right. Finally gotten back around to start streaming again um, after uh, a much longer time than I really wanted to of not being able to. All right, um, so let's see. For Knife's turn, we'll just go ahead and throw out Kinetic Neutralizer. And then... Uh, we'll whack... Ambuscade for three. Yes, he has the highest. Alright, so now whoever I tell to is actually going to take damage. Alright, um... Jeez, I really can't do anything. So we'll just draw five cards with the Scholar. Oh man, wow, that was that was pretty horrible. Um, okay. So yeah, um, Scholar can pitch too. I don't need this extra solid to liquid. Don't need Mortal Form. What? <laughs> Why, why, what makes you cringe? All right, let's go. Inspiring Presence. Um, let's see here. Oh, <laughs> are you familiar with Blaze Blue? Oh, okay, okay, then you are. All right. <laughs> well, you know the in joke regarding that, right? Um, all right. So let's go. Do I just want to? Th <laughs> uh, let's just deadly crocodile and deal some more damage. Um, uh, we'll just keep focusing on ambuscade because we can get ambuscade out of here. That that's one less villain we need to worry about. Hunter Full Pet. At the end of the environment turn, this card deals the vampire with the highest melee or highest HP, two melee and one radiant. Um, and then whenever a damage dealt by this card destroys a vampire, he regains three HP. Alright, so Bathory is gonna go uh, we'll have her go after Legacy, sure. And then Full Pet's gonna go after Bathory for us. Nice! All right, then we have Magman, the next nemesis. Oh, jeez, will you stop going after... Oh, I need to get rid of his snare, that's why. All right, um, so the Magman... So, at the end of Ambuscade's turn, this card deals the hero with the second lowest HP, three fire, and then if Unity is active, whenever an equipment card is destroyed, each hero takes one fire. Um... No, I'm not going to actually gain the 4 HP, but we are going to Indomitable Force again. And then go full Turducken, draw a card, ooh, Feral Fury, and Chomp Ambuscade for another 5. Okay, so everybody takes damage again. Wait. Oh, whoops, hold on. Go back to... I was supposed to turn him back into Rhino, that's right. There we go. So now, Chomp Ambuscade for five more. Okay, now no one's taking damage. All right, so let's see. Naturals can discard the shifter strength. Um, we'll discard a. In 
infiltrate and obfuscate, uh, discard and expect the worst, and discard uh, fortitude. Bolster allies will let us recover the lost cards. All right, now Knife gets to have some fun uh, with this incidental contact. So we will lead off with hitting Bugbear because he is highest. Yes, I would like to hit him again. Um, he is still highest, looks like. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't matter the rest of the order because he's it. But basically this is now two damage to everybody. Well, except for the Nemesis because of Glamour. Yes, I would like to deal misinformation extra damage. Oh, it's only two damage to Anvil, though, because of uh, Hammer and Shield. Eh, we'll keep him around. I like him. He, he lets things happen. And then we'll whack Bugbear for another three. Or do I want to go after Ambuscade? Uh, no, let's go after Ambuscade. That way Naturalist next turn can finish him off. Should have brought Knife Rogue Agent, actually. Oh, well. Bastion! Oh! Oh, this is... This is, this is not a happy card. So, Bastion. Bastion. When this enters play, destroy all their position cards. Reduce damage dealt to villain character cards other than Citizen Anvil by two. And if Citizen Anvil is ever incapacitated, res him to five health and destroy this card. Yeah. All right, so let's go Proverbs and Axioms. Yeah, it is a it is a not a friendly card. All right, so let's have Naturalist regain some health. Um, Scholar will also regain health. Knife will deal two damage or three damage to the Naturalist and then use a power. Um, and we will. Oh, I have to go after. Well, so it only affects character cards, not uh, not villain targets. So I can actually go after Hammer and Shield to try and... Um, and actually, Legacy is going to regain health, because otherwise that would be bad for the Naturalist. All right, Bugbear's turn. Um, let's see. Knife can discard two cards. Sure. Let's get rid of Amplified Combatant and... The Servo Gauntlet. Gives him back the Blood Scent. So now, Unpredictable Powers. We destroy one of Bugbear's ongoing cards, he regains 4 HP, and then shovels his trash into his deck. Let's get rid of Blood Scent! <laughs> oh boy, I need to heal. I can't play Heroic Interception because that will kill the natural. Oh, actually, no, I can. Um, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> and then we will heal the naturalist and the naturalist will then natural forms power or desperate prey for uh, gazelle to go back into full turducken play a feral fury and uh, let's go after anvil for six or no, actually, Hammer and Shield. Get rid of Hammer and Shield. And then Nail Anvil for four. All right, now we're back to the villain turn. So we've got Matron Urzi. Increase Radiant Damage Delta this card by one. Damage Delta Vampires is minus one. At the end of the turn, it regains health. So now Hunter Full Pet can only deal two damage at a time. Oh, she heals all vampires for one. Whoops. 
More importantly, naturalists... Jeez. Oh, First time Ambuscade deals damage to a hero each turn. He also deals a second hero, two projectile, uh, a third hero, two energy, and a fourth hero, two fire. Because too many guns! <laughs> Desert Eagle. It deals itself three Psychic. At the end of Ambuscade's turn, this card regains one HP and deals uh, the hero with the highest HP some amount of damage where X is its current uh, health. And if if Haka is active, it prevents all damage to itself, or prevents all damage villains would deal to it. I do not wish to regain four HP. Feral Fury. Um, we're just going to chomp the crap out of Anvil, because I need to get Bastion out of the way. Uh, stay in Rhino. Draw a card. Ooh, Predator's Eye. That's good. And then Deadly Crocodile, Anvil. So this will put him down, destroy Bastion, and reset his health to 5. Alright, now misinformation is going to play the Green Grocer, whose nemesis is uh guys. So at the end of Misinformation's turn, this card deals the hero character card with the most ongoing cards in play, one energy and one fire. Then if guys is in play, it deals one fire to each hero. Alright, so it does nothing, because Naturalist has the most cards in play and he is immune to damage at the moment. I can't play for the greater good because knife is immune to damage. Uh, that's okay. I can, um, let's see. What are my options here? I could energy burn bugbear. That would deal a nice chunk of damage to him. Can't play overdo it because knife can't take damage at the moment. So yeah, I guess we'll just bugbear, hit bugbear for seven. And then Energy Lance, um, Bugbear for another three, sure. Put him down to 20. All right, now we have Citizen's Imperative. If both Citizen Hammer, uh, if both of them are active, they each regain two HP. That's a little annoying. Um, but it doesn't matter, they didn't deal any damage, so that's good. Oh, how many targets do we have? We have 12 non-hero targets in play. Somebody's getting nuked. Um, Yeah, let's take down Bugbear. I need him... He needs to go away. Because, <laughs> the long, like I said, the longer he's in play, the worse it gets for us. Alright, cue ball. Another guy's nemesis. Uh, so, he hits the hero with the most cards in play? Um, hold on. Get back to cue ball. Deals the hero with the most cards in play to projectile. If guys is active, redirect damage dealt by environment targets to guys. Okay. Let's finally draw some cards. Alright, now, um... So, I could, uh, let's see. So, I think giving the ability to the naturalist is correct. Well, uh, it's obviously correct. He needs, a, he needs the health desperately. Um, then use base power as Rhino. We will play Predator's Eye. Um, oh, jeez. Now everybody's taking damage. Because of too many guns! Um, so... We will go... So let's... Choose Bugbear as the increased damage. Um... I will not draw extra cards. But I will kill Ambuscade. So... That causes him to play his remaining Nemesis cards. So we have Ray Manta uh, and Revolt. So we'll zoom in on them real quick. So Ray Manta, at the end of Ambuscade's turn, this card deals the hero with the highest HP, two energy damage, and destroys one equipment card. Then if there are any components in play, destroy one and each Nemesis regains two health. So 
Th that's ba he's Omnitron X's nemesis. Um, and then we have Revolt, at the end of uh, who's a setback nemesis. At the end of Ambuscade's turn, this card deals each hero two lightning damage. Then if setback is active, he boosts setback's unlucky by two. Um, I'm not sure how bad of an effect that is, actually. <laughs> All right, so now we're back to the environment. I might be losing Naturalist, though. So we have Dominic Katarina. At the end of the environment turn, this card deals the non-vampire target with the lowest HP, three and four. Yeah. I believe I have just lost Naturalist. Yep, Naturalist down. Sadness. All right, so highest HP we'll say is Knife. And then Rayman, to, or Revolt hits everybody. Well, that's a little annoying. Okay. And also, because of Glamour, that's going to make getting rid of these nemeses really, really painful. Um, because she keeps, she'll keeps she keep redirecting away from them. However, if I can get rid of the other four villain targets that are currently active, I win the game anyway, even if the nemeses are still active. Um, oh, the environment target with the highest HP deals each non-hero two melee damage. That would cause a whole bunch of damage. Um, so we do not want to do that. I think I want to... Greater good? Yeah, I, wa I want to have knife play greater good. So she will hit herself for three, draw a card, will play overdo it so that she gets two card plays on her turn, and then use her base power to zap bugbear... Actually, no, we'll zap misinformation to get the bonus for four damage. All right, so now we have endless possibilities. What does this do? Um, it reveals heroes and allied. Okay, so hold on. That was reveal top card of misinformation's deck. It's a one shot, discarded, and she deals each hero target two psychic damage. Otherwise, put it into play. And she played heroes and allied. Whenever a hero target deals damage, redirect that damage to the hero with the highest HP. Then destroy this card and play the top card of misinformation's deck. Oh boy. All right, so I don't have a harmless card for, um, ugh. that's bad. Well, I could energy burn. That, that would be three damage. Um, oh, that would hit, actually hit for seven. So instead, we'll just play focusing conduit blade and... Uh, skip, skip. Uh, so that's going to get redirected. Yes, actually. And that brings out Heartbreaker. All right, so Heartbreaker. Um, give a sec once we get to... Oh, and we have another Wildfire. All right, so Heartbreaker um, is under misinformation. 10 health nemesis for set, uh, for the Dark Watch. At the end of misinformation's turn, this card deals the hero with the highest HP to melee damage. Then he gets a permanent plus one damage buff. If any of the Dark Watch are active, his damage is irreducible. All right, so now Wildfire is just going to deal everybody damage, except for the vampires. And they're going to regain health. Okay, um, so now we need to start doing things. So let's turtle up a little bit with Flesh to Iron and start regaining health. Ooh, don't dismiss. That's a happy card. So, Wounding Slat. Woof! Oh, right. Um, Nemesis, or in-cap bonus. Because we've, uh, we've got two in-cap characters. Four damage. Yeah. And then he has to discard a card. Um, Let's get rid of Solid to Liquid. Remember what I said about getting rid of Bugbear quickly? This is why. This is, this is absolutely why. Oh my gosh, so much damage. 
All right, let's draw some cards. Try and get something. Um, let's gung ho knife so that she can use her power. And Bugbear is now highest, so let's get him back down. All right, so Feast of Flesh. At the end of the environment turn, play the top card of the environment deck. Then, if there are at least three vampires in play, destroy this card. At the start of the environment turn, each vampire deals the hero with the highest HP two melee damage. Thankfully, this is going to get rid of the vampire, or it's not going to to uh, do more than one card play. And we have Unhallowed Halls. Non-vampires can't regain HP. I want to keep this in play, actually, even though it really hurts Scholar and Legacy's uh, playability. Um, we'll have Legacy take the hit. Oh, this is bad. All right, so now, um, so we will have Knife play Energy Burn. And energy burn, um, let's see. So, so it would be, yeah, I think hitting hammer is the correct play because this way it'll be eight damage. So it'll chunk off half his health. We have endless possibilities, build insanity, or focused insanity. So now she's gonna hit everybody for damage. Um, and because of she is the nemesis of the Freedom 5, so that means that she's going to hit uh, Legacy for more damage. That's actually really bad. Uh, most cards in play will be the Scholar, so that he survives. Okay, so highest health right now is now Misinformation. So Energy Burn would deal... What is that? Um, energy burn would deal a decent amount of damage to her. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. And then... Thwack her again. Pyrohammer, he deals the hero with the highest HP to melee damage, then hammer deals each non-villain. Well, we lost Legacy. That's unfortunate. <laughs> oh, jeez. So now Bugbear's going to deal even more damage. Uh, Urzi can have the most. Alright, so let's hope this Don't Dismiss is... Uh, is a keeper. Oh, I need to discard for keeping this into play. Let's discard. I'm probably not going to be needing this redirection for very much longer. So, knife. What's your top card? Please be something good. Prime punch. That is... N yeah. Alright. Come on, something good. Oh! That is good! That is good! Yeah, you ain't dealing damage, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so dead. <laughs> oh, right. I can't regain health. Uh, okay. So he can't deal damage. Um, oh, jeez. We have knife at one health. Um, so let's see. I could have knife prime punch bugbear for two damage. That feral brawn is, is just killing me. Um, let's see here. Yeah, that, that that's really... So, actually, no, we'll have knife use for... Uh, well, it's two damage either way. So, use energy lance on bugbear. Hit him for two. Yes, Bugbear has the highest HP. Oh, right, because the, there's... 
Uh, wait. All right, knives down. Oh boy. Um, so all infernal damage is plus one. So that's actually good. What does Glamour say exactly again? Where is she? There she is. By a hero target. So that means that the 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 environment is actually not going to is not going to actually affect Glamour. Oh, I should have hit. Um, I should have had knife hit misinformation to get rid of her. Oh well. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Um, so let's see. So we will have Scholar play, know when to hold fast, get him some options for his turn. Oh, Grace Under Fire. That's going to be useful. I can use. Uh, that should be uh, allow me to kill Bugbear. All right, Focus Insanity. Hero with the highest HP deals itself three Psychic. If that's a character card, they discard their hand. No! Oh, no! Uh, discard hand, shuffle, discard into, li into deck, and then draw four cards. Oh, jeez. Uh... No, get out of the way. Get out of the way is good. Get out of the way is very good, because... Actually, no, it's not, because I can't heal. Um, all right, so let's, uh, I can destroy Feral Brawn. Is that my best play, or is, uh, yeah, I think destroy Feral Brawn. Oh, good. No equipment cards to destroy. Um, second highest. We'll say Urzi is second highest because we need to get rid of that damage reduction. All right. Now I need to discard a card. So let's discard... Uh, let's discard... Get out of the way, actually. And I'm going to play Flesh to Iron and then skip... Actually, no, we're not going to play Flesh to Iron. We're going to play Bring What You Need and use it so I can draw some cards. Uh, take Keep Moving and Grace Under Fire. All right, now... Oh, crap, Bugbear can deal damage now. Um... Ow. Ow. Uh, oh boy. So let's take Keep Moving and Proverbs and Axioms. Okay, if I can survive to my next turn, I might actually be able... Oh, jeez, this is so dicey. Oh, nope, we're dead. Ah! <laughs> yeah, he killed misinformation, but... Unfortunately, because I wasn't paying attention and I didn't get rid of Bugbear... Um, yeah. <laughs> well, enjoy the villain team music. I'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> 